Good morning, everybody. Bruchim Aboyim. I want to wish a heartfelt mazel tov to Reb Nechemia Kaplan, who became a Zayda for the first time. Son Yikusiel had a baby boy yesterday, right? Shabbos. Larichis Yom HaVishanam Toivas. With good health, happiness, good spirits, serenity. Harchavis Adas, Menuchas HaNefesh, Avithi Shri Bishat Toiva Matzlachas. Where do they live? Nice, okay. Gewaldig, a lot of nachas. Gadol's an l'toyro l'chupa l'masem toivim. Betech archava. At some point, all of us have to grow up. Whether we like it or not. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. The inner child wants to remain an inner child. You could be a zayda and a child. Those are the best Zaydas. <clears throat> okay, today's class is dedicated by a dear friend, Reb Ezra David Philip, with gratitude to the holy and courageous soldiers of the IDF. May Hashem protect them and all of the Jewish people in Israel and around the world. Thank you very much, Reb Ezra David. <clears throat> Okay, in honor of the new Zayd, I'll begin with a story about the Alter Rebbe. It's a very powerful story. The Alter Rebbe raised his grandson, the Tzemach Tzedek, because the Tzemach Tzedek's mother, the Alter Rebbe, had a daughter. Her name was Rebbe Tzendver Leah, And she passed away very young. She was a young mother, and she had a son, Menachem Mendel, the Tzemach Tzedek, who was <coughs> before his upshirner still. There was a... St- she gave away. She gave up her life for her father, for the Balatanya. She gave up her life. His life was in danger, and she called in three chesedim. She made a shvur by the sefer Torah. She gave up her life, and a few days later she passed away. She made a condition that her father raise her orphan. So from that day, the tzemach tzedek slept by the altar rebbe, and he he literally raised him. So once. The Tzemach Tzedek was sitting on the on the on the lap of the Alter Rebbe, and he was caressing his beard. You know, in the Alter Rebbe's picture, you could see the beard. He was caressing the Alter Rebbe's beard, and he was saying Zayda, 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 affectionately. You know, Grandpa, Grandpa, Grandpa. So the Alter Rebbe said, "Das is the Zayda. Das is the beard from the Zayda. This is the Zayda. This is the beard of the Zayda. Who is the Zayda?" So he puts his hand on his cheeks. He says, Zayda, Zayda. He says, Das is the Bekelach. These are the cheeks of the Zayda. But where's the Zayda? So he puts his hand on the nose. He says, This is the nose of the Zayda. This is the eyes of the Zayda. The mouth of the Zayda. This is the head of the Zayda. Oh, but who is the Zayda? Who is the Zayda? This is what he asked. So the Tzemach Tzedek, so to speak, didn't answer. It was like he got stuck, you know. <laughs> Mission accomplished. He got him stuck. Okay, and then he got off and he played. He went to play on the, on the floor. A few minutes later, Alter Rebbe was sitting, doing whatever he was doing, and suddenly he hears a scream, Ah! Samach Tzedek had his finger between, uh, where the door closes, he had his finger stuck over there. So he screamed, Ah! So Alter Rebbe ran over. He said, Ah! Das the Zayd. <laughs> this was a trick. <laughs> he said, Ah! Das the Zayd. Ru'usa de Liba. Understand? So actually it's going to connect to what we're going to learn soon also. <laughs> okay, we're up to page 292. Uh, the line, the paragraph starts with Zeho. It's the middle of Perik Vav of the Maimer Reishas Goyim Amalek of Purim Tavshin Tes Vav. Vizel Mashakasa V'chares Imay Habris. What's the summation? Ah, two ninety-two, the third paragraph. Vizeho, mashakasa v'charis in my habris. So the main point that was discussed was there's nefesh ruach neshama, both in the divine soul and in the animal soul. And he went through what neshama is, what ruach is, what nefesh is both in the divine soul and in the animal soul. 
And the point was that the meet marriage between the two souls is not a random mutation, like two cells, that's two cells slash souls just came in, that, you know, randomly uh, uh, coexist and make each other crazy and create a new product, a molecule called Anishama, <laughs> but rather this is an intention, it's deliberate, because the point was that the Nefesh Alekis should be in constant communication with the Nefesh Bahamas. The Divine Soul should be in constant communication with the animal soul. Mm -hmm. And constant means every single day and every single night. Constant doesn't just mean once in a while. It means it's an ongoing journey of the animal soul talking. And the animal soul talking really means the body talking. It's the voice of the body because the animal soul is the vivifying force of the body, the electrical currents generating the circulation and generating the animation of the body, that is the Nefesh Abhamas, as it says in Chumash, and it's brought in Tanya, Ki Nefesh Habasar Bidami, the soul of the flesh, lives in the blood, meaning it's expressed and it's manifested through the circulation of the blood that brings oxygen and nutrients to all of the cells of the body, allowing them to live. And of course, with the center in the brain, the Mayach, and the heart going to all the parts of the body. So this nefesh habasar, this nefesh habasar, the soul of the flesh, is bedam, it's the blood, and that is the, that is the nefesh achiyunas, the nefesh ativas, the nefesh abahamas, the biological soul, it's called the natural soul, it's called the animal soul. And it has within it a full spectrum of faculties. In other words, it's a consciousness. It's not just an electrical blind force, it's a consciousness. It's a consciousness that has seichel, it has awareness, and it has cognition, and it has midis, it has emotions. And of course, it has the ability to th produce thoughts and words and actions. And the entire spectrum of the soul of the Nefesh Bahamas is called the animal consciousness. And because it vivifies the body, so it's called Nefesh Abbasar. The definition of this in soul is the soul that gives life to the flesh. The nefesh alikis is not called nefesh abasar. It's not the soul that gives, that vivifies the flesh. It's also, it's all part of it, because the nefesh alikis is tucked into the nefesh abahamas. They're working together. In other words, every experience of the nefesh alikis is felt by the nefesh abahamas, and conversely, because the two completely are merged to the point that it's very hard even for us to make that distinction. What comes from what? It takes a lot of avoided to know. Okay, this is my animal soul talking. This is my divine soul talking. But that relationship is intentional in order for the animal soul to be touched and dealt with and spoken to and educated and enlightened and sublimated and ultimately transformed by the divine soul. And that is so many different stages, but there's always a conversation going on. And because they each have nefesh, ruach, and neshama, therefore there's a conversation that goes on between them. And as a result of that, the nefesh alakis could influence the nefesh abamas. How? First, it has to understand its language. And that's why he says you have to speak mm -hmm. to the nefesh asichlis of the nefesh abahamas. In other words, the nefesh asichlis, which is the rational soul of the nefesh abahamas, is open to a conversation from the nefesh alakis. And in order for this to happen, the nefesh alakis has to be able to find the method of talking to nefesh abahamas in the body in a way that it should listen. All this we discussed and explained last year at length. We spoke about it also. Shabbos, the idea that, you know, the, 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 today in science they describe the nervous system as the bridge between the mind and the body, right? Sometimes you talk about in Tanya, he brings from the Zoya, Mayach Shalat Alalev. The brain rules over the heart. So people think Shalat means like a dictator, like a tyrant, like a Shalit. Yosef Wa Shalat, you know. <laughs> You tell the heart what to feel, and the heart feels that way. Really what it means is that the Mayach is capable of mentoring the heart, of, of, of being there for the heart, of, of, of nurturing the heart, like literally parents with children. Parents are not supposed to judge children and denigrate them and say, cry baby, cry baby, you're such a cry baby. You know, that's what we do with ourselves. But the heart is like a child. Don't, don't scream at me, cry baby. You also don't have to take the child right away to the hospital bus because he's crying, right? It's a concept of understanding the child, appreciating the limitations of a child, 
understanding that the key is not to break the child, chas v'shalom, but to nurture them and help the child feel safe and secure and seen and soothed in order to, the four famous S's, in order to be able to become an adult. If all you heard as a child is cry baby, cry baby, cry baby, the mishigana, crank a kind, right? What type of adult do you have? You have a two-year-old adult who's still waiting for somebody to give him a little caress. So by ca- telling him to be an adult at two years old, you made sure that he will never, ever be able to be an adult. It's, it's a why. I told him to be an adult. In order to be an adult, you have to be a child. <laughs> right? Zayda. You have to be able to feel Zayda. <laughs> Zayda. It's not the nose and it's not the forehead. It's through Usa de Lib. It's my presence. <laughs> it's my presence. Like not the nose, it's not the forehead, it's everything. It's me, it's the I. Where does the I come out? The I comes out in connection, in connectivity, in presence. Zayda, ah, this is it. It's a Reich no? Very deep story. Parents and grandparents, they want to give their children their nose, their eyes, their hands, their beard, all good besides, besides themselves. <laughs> I'll give you my, my I'll give you my credit card, I'll give you my wallet, I'll give you toys, I'll give you computers, I'll give you tablets, besides myself. And the reason is because presence is the hardest thing. It's nefesh, it's neshama. If I'm not present for me, how can I be present for somebody else? So the idea, huh? So talk to the Nefesh HaSichlis of Nefesh Bahamas first means that the Nefesh HaBahamas has to be able to listen with the Tzeichel. The nervous system is the bridge between the mind and the body. You can't talk to the body without the nervous system. So if the nervous system is dysregulated, yeah, in, in psychology and neuroscience they call it when you're in a uh, sympathetic state or parasympathetic state. Sympathetic state means I'm not regulated. I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed, I'm, I'm anxious. I could give 100,000 speeches and I could read 100,000 svodim. It's not going to have an impact because the body and the animal soul are completely in a heightened state of danger. Like I spoke, they're an alert. That's what we spoke in the previous class. Parasympathetic state means it's regulated. In, in neuroscientific terms is you're operating with your prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex, that's nefesh asichlis, that's where the nefesh asichlis is, can, can be like a very mature parent and it could see the, the parts that are very anxious, but it, it sees all the parts. And there's a process of, of dealing with it, of embracing it. And then there could be a conversation between the Nefesh Alikas and the Nefesh Bahamas. If not, the Nefesh Bahamas says, I'm busy protecting this whole system. Do me a favor. It doesn't use those words. Those are sophisticated words. Those words come from the prefrontal. All it's saying is, there's a tiger in the room. Get out of here fast. <laughs> get out of here fast. You want me to be present? There's no such a thing as being present. If I'm present, I get eaten up. When the Nefesh Bahamas is in this parasympathetic state, then you could communicate. Then it could start experiencing, listening to the Nefesh Alikas. It's not a conversation in terms of words. It's a conversation in terms of energy. So, the Nefesh Bahamas is really very innocent. It's very pure. It's just there to make sure the person is alive. It's not an evil soul. It's not a, a bad soul at all. It's Bechlal not. On the contrary, it's very sensitive to self-preservation to make sure the person is around. So when you say mayach shalat alalev, what does shalat mean? It's like parents. Parents, you say the job of parents is to control children. Sometimes you need a control, but the main thing is, the job is to be able to be present, to show up as a mature adult, not to destroy their personality growing up, not to delegitimize their emotions, mm-hmm but also to be able to relax. Like, you don't want, we don't have to call the ambulance right now. You, you hurt your finger, I'm going to give you a hug. I'm going to give you a Band-Aid. I'm going to give you some ice cream, right? We don't have to run to the hospital. Sometimes we do have to. The lave is screaming. The body is very, very intense. You don't judge it. You don't scream at it. You must shook in the body, you little baby. You're anxious again. How much do you think people get rid of anxiety when they get upset, when they get anxious about their anxiety? 
You don't heal anxiety through anxiety. <laughs> it's a simple truth. You don't heal it. You intensify anxiety through anxiety. Why are you anxious? Do my sugar nuts and drink the fat behave my shaita tippish? Oh, now, oh, you look very calm now. <laughs> you intensify anxiety through anxiety, right? The anxiety needs an adult, so to speak, that is calmer and could look at it <laughs> and embrace it and give it some oxygen and give it some love and feel it and give it some compassion. And know that it's not the absolute reality. The anxiety is screaming very loud, right? The anxiety, it's fine. You're a child and I'm here for you. I'm not afraid of you. The worst is to be afraid of your child. When parents are afraid of their children, they can't parent them. Because they're their children. <laughs> we don't have to be afraid of our anxiety. We don't have to be afraid of our emotions. We don't have to be afraid of what's happening in the body. It's all there for tikkun. It's all there for, for, for an embrace. So that's the whole process of the communication between the two souls. It's clear. So now he goes right to continuing. Bezel, Masha Kosov, this is the deeper meaning of the whole series of the Psukim. We say this every morning. Okay, just here is a little tutorial on davening. We should have been taught this at eight, but fine, fifty is also good. Nishkefeilach. Sixty is echt good. Nach besser. Nach besser. You can take it in deeper. The structure of davening is very interesting and it's very intricate. So there's a whole section of davening people don't realize. It's a series of psukim from Nehemia. When the Jewish people came back from Bavel to build the second base Hamikdash, it was a very complicated era. Most Jews stayed in, in Babylonia, in Iraq, because it was nice over there. <laughs> you know, it was a stickle America, so to speak. Only 42,000 Jews from the whole Klai Yisrael decided to go back to Israel to rebuild the second base Hamikdash. Many of them said, not, there was even a famous letter that Jews in Germany wrote. Uh, uh, whatever they, not, not everybody was interested. So uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, they were, they, were, they were the ones in charge of the Aliyah, the second Aliyah, so to speak, from, uh, from Bavel to Eretz Yisrael. They rebuilt the second Beis HaMikdash. The Matzav in Eretz Yisrael was very, very dire, both in terms of poverty and in terms of spirituality, and they had to revive the entire nation. So the Sefer Nehemiah in Tanakh speaks a lot about that. So in Perik Tess, he speaks there about the celebration of Tishrei that Ezra reinstituted in the, in the, in, when they came back. Ezra and the Rosh Hashanah and the days of Tishrei and the celebration of Sukkot. Then he speaks, I think it was on the 24th day of that month of Tishrei after Sukkot, that the Levim spoke to the Jewish people. And that's when they go through saying that whole series from In Vayivarech David. Um, all the way down all the way till Bemayim Azim. That's all one series of Psukim and Nehemiah that the Leviim were saying to the Jewish people when they gathered together in the beginning of the second Beis Hamikdash. So that's one series of a conversation that's happening all the way from the middle of Ayvarech David, all the way till B'mayim Mazem. Then we shift and we go to the text of the Chumash from Vayosha through Az Yashir, that's already from Chumash, Parshas B'Shalach, the story of Kriyas Yamsuf and the Shir, the Shir Sayyam. When you look at the Psukim, there's a very interesting line. It says, V'charis imay habris. Hashem found Avram Avinu, He chose Avram, right? He found his heart loyal. Matzah says, L'vavinam. V'charis imay habris. He made with him a bris. What was the bris? The cover? Losses loy. So it's a knani, a chiti, a moiri, a prizi, a chivi, a yivusi, a gigashi. Eretz Knan had seven big tribes or empires. He's going to give him that land. So he says, "V'charis me bris losses loy." The knani chiti meir prizi losses lazar to give to his descendants. But tokem as devarecha, and you fulfilled your words. Why? Ki tzadik kato. You're a tzadik. You're a tzadik. That's what it says. And then you saw the pain of the, my fathers in Egypt, and you heard their cry. 
<laughs> you have to be a tzaddik to fulfill your promise. As a, a, a husband. Really, you shouldn't have fulfilled your promise, but you're a tzaddik. <laughs> if you borrow from somebody $50,000, yeah, <laughs> and you give it back, so you're the tzaddik hador, you became the tzaddik hador. So you're an elechem mensch, you're not a crook. You're not a crook. You made a promise with Avram, you made a promise with Yitzhak, you made a promise with Yaakov, and you did it, yeah. I would expect that, I mean, even with people. You make a promise, you make a commitment, and it wasn't stam a commitment in thought or just verbal. Even then there's a ninyan to be mekayim, your words. But this was a commitment, a brisbane absodim, it was a serious commitment. With kinyon and with acquisitions, everything. You did it. Ki because you're a tzaddik. To put it differently, not doing it is immoral. It's abhorrent. <laughs> Right? You made a deal, you made a promise. There was a lot of sacrifice of Avram and Yitzhak and Yaakov for this. <laughs> yeah, you did it. Thank you. Okay. What's the Kitzadikot? It's the Pashtus. It's a big palace. So we say it every day. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that. I would expect a Tzadik, something unique. This is the basic humanness and basic decency that you don't deceive somebody. Yeah. Yaakov Avinu came into love and said, Lomari mi sonny, why did you deceive me? Lovin should have said a simple answer because I'm not a tzaddik. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a tzaddik. I'm just a regular guy. I'm a regular citizen. <laughs> well, that's why I deceived you. I'm not a tzaddik. Go to tzaddikim. It's not an answer. Why did you deceive me? You made a promise. You're giving me rochel. Why did you give me leia, right? It's a good taina. Lovin had his excuses. We don't marry the younger sister before the older sister. But he does it because I'm not a tzaddik. Here we say, which means you established, you fulfilled your words. So the Rebbe is going to explain the whole Indian on a di- much deeper level. The word is Vatokim. He doesn't say, you fulfilled your. The words Vatokim literally means, from the words camp, you, you, you raised your words, you lifted up your words. The word kiyum and vatokim literally vatokim is kiyum, but vatokim is you you esta- we say you established it, huh? But from the word lakum, come, standing up, kimo, yeah. Ovelechtecha vaderech ovishachbecha uvekumecha. When you stand up, when you raise up, when you wake up, you could have said vatokim literally means right. You fulfilled it. So he says omeleis. There's different words. Kiyamtas dvarach. The explanation all of this is the Pasik Zebba Behemshech Lipsukim Shalifneza. This Pasik Vacharis in Meabriz is not in a vacuum. It's a continuation from before. What's before? He starts off. Atohu Hashem Levadach. It's a whole series. Atohu Hashem Levadach. We say it every day, right? From Nechemia. It's a whole, it starts off. You are Hashem. You, Atohu Hashem Levadach. Literally, it means you, He, Hashem, you're alone. <laughs> Of course, in the Siddha, everything makes sense, even if it doesn't, because you're saying it from two, four years old. But when Ata, you, Hashem, Hashem, you, He, Hashem, Lodachalo. Ata, Sisus Hashemai, you made the heavens. Then you say, Shmei Hashemai, the heavens of the heavens, Vachal Tzvam, all their legions. Then you say, Ha'aretz, the earth, Vachal Hashemai, everything on the earth. Then you say, Hayamim, the seas, Vachal Hashemai, everything in the seas. Then you say, Va'ata, Mechaya, Skula. You give life to all of them. What's right after that? You're the one who chose Avram. Ex- ex- extricated him from a place called ur Kazdim. That's where he was born. In ur Kazdim, That's in, in, um, in southern Turkey. Northern Iraq, southern Turkey. ur Kazdim. There's still a place you can go. It's called ur Right, you are they call it, and you extracted him from Ur Kazda. Um, Asam Tashmei Avram, you made his name Avraham. Um, Matzasas Levavi Nemal Lefanach, you found his heart loyal, trustworthy, dedicated Nemal Lefanach. And then Vecharos Ima Yabris, you made with him a bris. Losses says, Vatok Mazarch Kitzadik Kotev Ateres On Yavis In All the Way Till the End. Vecharos in the most Sedunim is a new paragraph, so people don't realize that it's all it's one it's one continuation of Psukim. 
So tomorrow when you daven, just remember that. It's one continuous, one conversation. Or today when you daven. This is not stam. They threw out random things. They could have also spoken about Yitzchak. They could have spoken about Akko. They could have spoken about Shvatnik. They could have spoken about Yosef. They could have spoken about Moshe Rabbeinu. This these pesukim represent the whole seder habriya. The inner working of creation, the system of creation, and the whole seder haishtal shalos. The order of ishtashlos, which means the order of devolution, evolution, from the infinite to the finite, from the spiritual to the physical, from the abstract to the concrete, from the transcendent to the imminent, all the way down to the person's initiative and avoid. Omas Chil Bekasov, he begins the first words is Ato Hu Hashem Levadach. Ato Hu Hashem Levadach. He could have said Ato Levadach, you're alone. Hashem Levadach. Ato hu levadecha. It's ato hu. Actually, I told you. In English grammar, they don't translate it that way because it wouldn't make sense. But literally, ato means you. What does who mean? He. <laughs> so now you don't talk to somebody and you say, you, he. <laughs> I'm here, I'm not a he. You talk if somebody's not here. Right? He went. It's called second person. Loshanelam. Right? Hu halach, hu asau, hu kana, hu yavamachar. Who means he? If you're here, I say, ata. You, you're right here. I'm sorry, who is third person? Atta, second person. Vaita, you have his name. Atta, who, and then Yudke Vavke Levadach. The Rebbe says, not so Pashat. Atta, who Hashem represents a whole Indian. Atta, Koya Latzmus Mahus. Atta captures the essence, the core, the essence of everything. Atzmus Mahus means the essence, the essence of everything. It's explained in many places. Really, on Atmos, the only one you could say, Ata, you here, right here, Neuchach means you're present. Because it's present everywhere and in everything, there's no space devoid of him. Less is the expression of Tikkuni Zoya. And like we learned in the Basi Lagani Maimarim of Oyrin Soif Lamaila Adin Ketzel Lamata Adin Tachlis. So that's even when you're talking about Oyr. Here he's talking about Atta, which is you, Mamish, you. So Leisa Sarponimine, there's no space devoid of him. So therefore, wherever you are, you could say Atta, right here. Atta. As Uncle Moishi taught the Jewish world, Hashem is here. Hashem is there. Hashem is truly everywhere. So wherever you are, you could say Atta. In fact, the only reality you can always say Atta to is Atmos, because Leisa Sarponimine. There's no space, there's no matzav, there's no situation that is devoid. Devoid, we're not only talking about a physical space, but every conceivable space can, is not present, is not devoid of the presence of atzmos. Yeah. And b'meili, you could say, Atta, lo shenoichach, Atta, you, right here. Who? Koya lo oir kemoishu behelem, hainu kemoishu la Who already is a state where you could speak about concealment and revelation. That's why you could say, who? He, which means it's more concealed. So this is already relating to Oyer. What's Oyer? Oyer is always light. Light means the way things are expressed, the way things are manifested. Here they could be expressed or not expressed, or expressed more or expressed less, or expressed this way or expressed that way. So Atmos is the essence, and Oyer is always the radiate, the radi, the, the, the revelation of that. That's what Oyer is. What does Oyer do? What's Oyer? Oy represents, like we always spoke about what light is, light is the transmitting any reality into the perception of another reality. That's what light does. What does light literally on a physical level, what does light achieve? It allows us to see. Light itself I can't see. But light allows me to see everything else. If there was no concept of light, everything would just be what it is. Light allows there to be a relationship. I could perceive you. You could see me because light, I could see you or think, see anything else. And everything gives off light. Everything emits light. What they call the electromagnetic uh, fields where the energies of light, spectrums of light travel and are perceived by the other. The other, based, of course, on their own kalim. So that light can be concealed, it can be revealed, it can be present in a manifested way, it could be I can't, I can't experience it, etc. So that's all Oyr. In Oyr itself, there's the, there's who, there's who, and there is, 
and there is Havaya. So he says, It's the Ur, the way it is, still for himself. The way you reveal, but only to yourself. And then there's Havaya. The way the Ur comes out, but it's still all pre Tzimtzum. Because it's pre tzimtzum, so it's all Atta, who, and Hashem are all Levadecha. The oneness, Levad, ain't oid Melvad, Levad means one, right? Levad. Bad Bevad. It's still all revealed because it's all pre tzimtzum, which means, on a general level, um, the Arizal explains is the concept called Tzimtzum, which we learned about many times. The idea of Tzimtzum is that, uh, huh? Shuta. Shuta, yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that was a big machlaikas by the Mekobalim. But the idea of Tzimtzum is that the Arizal says that in the beginning of creation, and when we say in the beginning, he means pre creation. Pre doesn't only mean pre five, you know, a certain amount of years ago. Pre means on the level of pre creation. In other words, even pre, there was pre, before, before there was a before, before there was time to talk about before. That's the Eitz Chaim begins. The Eitz Chaim is the Arizal Sefer. It begins, the light of the Eitz Chaim fills the entire Makam the entire vacuum, the entire space, where there would be a world and there would be identity. Which in simple English means, in the pre Tzimtzum reality, what is experienced is only infinite consciousness. And then there was a tzimtzum. What does it mean there was a tzimtzum? He says, the Oyer Yitzhak withdrew itself, or constricted itself, or condensed itself, or concealed itself, allowing there to be a chalal, an empty space. And in that empty space, that's where he brought in a ray of light called a kav, and that's how the whole system of creation begins. Now there's the big question of Tzimtzum is Kipshuta. This is what Arizal says, it's Tzimtzum Kipshuta, is it not Kipshuta? Did he mean literally that the Ein Saif actually withdrew itself and it's an empty space? Or it's just figuratively, in other words, the empty space perceives that it was Tzimtzum. Tzimtzum is Shaloi Kipshuta, and that was the shit of the Baal Shem Tev and Alter Rebbe, the whole Chassidus is based, a lot of Chassidus is based on Tzimtzum Shaloi Kipshuta. So when you're talking about pre-Tzimtzum, everything is Levadecha, you alone, there's nothing else. Everything is ain't safe. And there's everything there, but everything is in a state of ain't safe. Everything is infinity. In that itself, you have Atta, you have Hu, and you have Hashem. <laughs> Atta is Atzmus Mamash, Atzmus itself. That's beyond revelation or concealment. Even revelation or concealment, you can only say about Eid ain't safe, not about ain't safe. Atzmus itself is ain't safe. It's also ain't late it has no beginning. Eid already has a beginning, it has the source, it doesn't have an end. But it has a beginning. So a Mela Atta is Atmos. Then you have an Ur, you have two Bchinas. You have Hu and you have Yutke Vavke. All pre Tzimtzum, so it's called Levadecha. Hu is the way the Ur is, what he calls it La In other words, the way the light is internal, it's not yet manifest to the other. And this is all even pre Tzimtzum, where the other just means the other inside yourself. To give an example in a person, it would be the difference between. The way you experience yourself and the way you're ready to share yourself with another. In other words, the way the person experiences themselves is already light. It's already, it's not the me, it's the way I communicate with me. But it's the way the I is being perceived by me. So it's the way I am processing my I. But nobody else is processing that. And then there is, if I'm getting ready for a conversation with you and I want to share, it's already putting it into words or thoughts or concepts that will be relatable to you. It's all still inside of me. It's still much, much more intense than what anybody else experiences. So that's all with inside the person. You have your essence, who you are. And for that, I have no description because any description I'm going to have is already the way I'm processing it through words and concepts which already contains it in a particular form. But then there is the way you experience yourself and the way you want to share that experience with another and you make it relatable to other to the other. So that's an ur, that's just an example, the ur commercial atzmai. 
the way it is, the experience of Atzmus within himself, and then the way the Oid is, preparing for a Seder Ishtal so there's a Yud, and there's a He, and there's a Vav, and then a He. Which Yud and He and Vav and He already represents a system of communication. This is but all pre symptom In other words, it's all the way it is within the Ein Saif. It's like within, a Mashal would be, it's still with, all within the person himself. So that's all Levadecha. That's Atuhu Hashem Levadecha. Then you have, you made the heaven and the heavens of heavens. The Then you have a tzimtzum, and here it's ato sisa. Here you made, you made heaven, and you made the heavens of heavens. So in Kabbalah he calls it two names. This what's called in Kabbalah tehiru ila, the higher light, and tehiru tata, the lower light. Lekayin shamash and asat to be tahirihi. Tahir means pure. Tahirihi in Aramaic also means light. Oyer is called tahirihi. Ke'etzem ha'shamayim latoyar. It says in Parshas Meshbatim. In the middle of the day, when the heaven is crystal blue and clear, it's called latoyar. Tahirihi shal mizbeach. The purity of the mizbeach is when it's open, when it's exposed. The essence of the mizbeach. So tahiru ilah means the higher light and the lower light. He says this is already post simtsum. It's called makifim hal yoyinim. That's why it's called shamayim. The difference of Shamayim and Eretz is heaven is called Makif. Just like we look at the heaven and all we can see is the dome of heaven, the Makif of heaven, the circle, the ball of heaven that encompasses us, so it's called Makif. Where Eretz, earth, is already we're walking on and there's differentiation that's called Pnimi. So the Makifim Hal Yainim, which means the earth, the way in it is a place of state of Makif. But there is Tehiru Ilah, the higher light, and then there's the lower light. This is all beyond Atzillus, which are the Makifim, in other words, the way the Ur comes out, Soiviv, after the Tzimtzum. That's called Shamayim and Sheh Shmei HaShamayim. Then there's Umam Sheh Ha'aretz. Atas is HaShamayim, Shmei HaShamayim, Ha'aretz V'chol HaShem Ha'aretz V'chol HaShem Ha'aretz V'chol HaShem Ha'aretz V'chol HaShem Earth and seas. This is already all on the planet. We have the Eretz and we have the Yam. And we already came down to the planet. Shazel Winyan Seder HaYishtal Shalos Shanech Lek Liyam V'yabosh Ha'aretz. This is already what's called Seder HaYishtal Shalos. In other words, the system from Atzillus and on, where you have sea and you have dry land. You have Eretz, but in Eretz itself, you have the part that's dry land, and you have the Yamim, it's also part of Eretz. Shem Almed is Gashiv Almed is Galia, generally it's the concealed world. And the revealed world, Sviris Abina, Sviris Amalchus, sometimes it's called Bina and Malchus. Bina is Gashiv, Malchus is Galia, Kiyudu Abinian. Baruch Hashem Aleke Yisrael, Mina Oilam Vada Oilam. The Pasuk says, we say it in Davening, Hashem is blessed from the world to the world. What's the world of the world? The divine light is communicated in the concealed world. And in the revealed world, This includes the whole Ishtashlus from the highest to the lowest. This is all Alma Deskasya till Alma Deskalya. Just to bring this down a little bit, at least the general Nakuda. <clears throat> it's all states of consciousness, how you relate to reality. He's starting here from the top. We, of course, start from the bottom. Yeah. We will start from the lowest place of Alma de Zgalia, which means the way it's revealed. In other words, when you talk about reality, what is reality? <coughs> so you have reality, Atta, Hu, it's all states of reality. There's Atta, there's Hu, there's Hashem, over there it's all of Adacha. Then there's Shamayim, there's Shmei Shamayim, there's Eretz. There's Yam and Vichal HaShabahem. And then we say, Va'ata Mechaya Eskula. Like we spoke in the earlier class about what Seder Ishtal Shalos is. What Seder Ishtal Shalos? Seder Ishtal Shalos.
is what allows for the relationship to be real and to be authentic and to be all-encompassing. You know, in simple words, when you speak about Hashem's oneness, so Hashem is one. So Hashem, you say, Einoid Mulvadeh. What does Einoid Mulvadeh mean? <laughs> it means there's nothing outside of Him. Yeah. What, about when you, what about when you trigger me? Is it still Einoid Mulvadeh? So somebody once said, Ein oid mulvadoi ve ein oid mulvadi. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like Ein oid mulvadi. So then it's also Ein oid mulvadi. So you'll say, yeah, well, your Yitzhahara took over. I understand my Yitzhahara took over. So what happened with Ein oid mulvadi? So get rid of your Yitzhahara. So Ein oid mulvadi is good for the books. Until you trigger me. And then what? Who ain't Ed Mavad? What's Ed Mavad? The Blavitzik Abaditchev once said he used to speak to Hashem. So he said, you know, if you would have, if Ganeidin and Gehenim would have been in front of us, and the Tivus of Olam Hazer would be in Reishes Chachma and the Sefer Reishes Chachma, no Jew would sin. But Ganeidin and Gehenim you put into Reishes Chachma. All the Tivus of Olam Hazer you put in front of us. What do you want from people? That's what the Blavitzik Abaditchev said. <laughs> put the we'll put the whole Olam Hazer in Reishes Chachma. We'll open our safe. Reishes Chachma is a Musa safer. We'll yo dash from the old Musa Svanim. It's an intense safer. So open, we'll open it up, and we'll learn about all the all the <laughs> all the triggers, all the guilt, all the shame, all the anger, all the addiction. Reishes Chachma doesn't work that way. No, he was from the Kabbalah of Tzvas. He lived in Chevron, I think. Rebel yo dash from the time of the Arizal. It's one of the fundamental svarim of Musr, of uh, Kabbalah, Musr. It's Reish's Chachma. So that's what the Blitzvah did you Over there you put it, Gan Eden again. The Tivus you put it, what do you want from people? What does Einoid Movadeh mean? You could say Einoid Movadeh. And what about me? And what about my experiences? So one of two things. Either Einoid Movadeh you relegate to the svarim, right? Or maybe Yom Kippur by Ne'ila, or once in a while. Or for a few tzaddikim. Or the other way around. You know, there was Enid Mulvada is, 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 it's funny, but, but, but now I'm dealing with me. And if I take myself seriously, I can't take Enid Mulvada seriously. Or the other way around. I take Enid Mulvada very seriously, and I don't take myself ser- seriously at all. So what do I do with myself? So somehow, I read about people who don't have a self and I try to join them. Maybe, uh, uh, so how, 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 how honest am I with that? So that can often lead to complete disassociation from self. So I live with Einoid Mulvadeh. Am I happy? I'm always happy. Because everything is always Baruch Hashem. It's perfect. Einoid Mulvadeh. I don't complain. I don't kvetch. I don't even have pain. How can I have pain? I don't, exactly. So it's one of the two. You can't say, there's nothing but you. So where do I, like a person gets married, right, and then tells his wife or her husband, Ein oid mulvadi. In this marriage, there's only me. So you have a choice. <laughs> so so either you get rid of me or you get rid of you. There's, there's no, uh, I'm making it a little uh, crass, but that's the, I want you to understand the nakuda. Yeah, no, I was just using the word. I wasn't. I'm asking, so oh, so that's what we're going to say. Yeah. So what we're, that's where we're headed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the two has to go. <laughs> okay. So either you don't take it seriously. Again, it's good for a few tzaddikim or it's good for the svarim. Or even if I take it seriously, but I take it seriously until I don't take it seriously. <laughs> that made sense? I take it seriously until I don't take it seriously. Or I take it very seriously and what do I do with the me? If I can destroy it, I try to destroy it. I, I disconnect. And I would say so many struggles of people 
uh, it's, it seems abstract, but it's not so abstract. This is struggles of people. Does a noid Mulvada is it authentic? Is it authentic? And I would say this is one of the main nekudas in all the Maimonim. Or to put it differently, as somebody once asked me, I, I mentioned this a few shirim ago. He said, before I started to learn, I knew there was one God. That's what I was taught, there's one God. Ani mamin, Hashem echad, Ushma echad. There's one God. So already I got stuck, because Hashem echad, Ushma echad is already confusing. He's one, his name is one. Well, what happened? He has a different name? Okay. Suddenly you learn here, what do we just learn now? There's Atom, there's Hu, there's Hashem, there's Tehidu Elah, there's Tehidu Tata, there's pre symptom there's post symptom there's Alma Deskasit, there's Alma Deskasit, that's just a few. <laughs> we could do another, another few million. What, what happened? Just <laughs> Let's keep it simple, right? Or to, wh- wh- why go out of oneness? The answer to this is it's punkt farket. Every level that we learn about, level that we learn about, is to take and make Einaid Malvade real. This is, this is a Yisaida Yisaida. It's not, okay, another level. So from one God, we Chas B'Shalom created, you know, 1.1 million pieces. Thank you. You think you have a lot of cells. You have 70 trillion cells. Wait to see what's happening in God. In order to make Einoid Mulvade real on a visceral level in each one of your cells, and there are 70 trillion cells, you need to understand how Einoid Mulvade permeates 70 trillion Madregas. It's very easy to say Einoid Mulvade, nothing to do with me, until you trigger me. <laughs> and then I forgot everything. Or I could do Fakert. I can, I can disconnect from me. There's no me, Bechla. And then, yeah, Einoid Mulvade. Both are not the Kavana, both are not the real Inyan. The whole Inyan of Seder Ishtalshalos, the whole, we speak about Seder Ishtalshalos, what's Seder Ishtalshalos? Seder Ishtalshalos means there's a system of how Hashem allowed Atmos to be manifested and trickle through every single different type of experience of consciousness. But it's all Atta. And since it's all Atta, the Atta Mechaya is Kulam. So therefore, in every Nekuda, in every Nekuda and every experience, there could be a relationship with the Enad Mulvad. To destroy Seder Ishtal Shalos, I have a better idea. You should have told God not to create the world. When people say, I don't deal with myself. In other words, you're telling God, get rid of Seder Ishtal Shalos. Seder Ishtal Shalos was the miracle of relationship. You, you understand what I'm saying? The first taste. I don't mean if you understand it here. For this, I can give another marshal. I'm talking... Uh, Logically, it's very simple. Aim, so it means you're also speaking of aim. Otters. Otters. If Einoid Mulvade, in simple words, excludes you, you're saying it's not true. Unless you say you're not true. How can you believe you're not true? For that, you have to be either very, very abused or very, very holy. <laughs> and usually it's not the latter. <laughs> and even when you're very, very holy, the moment you spoke about you being holy, it's already Nishta Einoid Mulvade. It's I'm holy. So it's all a joke. That's the Chiddush. Say that Ishtashlis means that creation is Hashem wanted that infinite consciousness should be able to be lived and breathed in every finite experience of a person without delegitimizing that experience. Because if I delegitimize that experience, I just said, Yesh Oid Malvadai. My trigger on this, you don't say Einoid Malvadai. Sorry. <laughs> So you'll say it's all very nice and talk, but I'm triggered. Vu einaid mulvade. This this is this is avoid. Avoid is it's easy to say I'm not triggered. It's not true. But we know what happens tomorrow. You get triggered much more. <laughs> what are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Oh, really? You look it. And then tomorrow, when it explodes, we know what you're feeling. And then the einaid mulvade really goes to the garbage because it was all disassociated. I was disassociated. 
And it works when you disassociate it until spaghetti hits the fan. When spaghetti hits the fan, suddenly you see, oh, there's a lot of things, Malvada. <laughs> and I'm a mess. I'm a complete mess. This is there's no shortcuts. If you wanted a shortcut, Atmos could create everything without Ishtashlus. We, we need all this. Hashem, Malavada, do whatever you want. Create, create. I don't know. He, he could jump from Atmos right here to Muncie. It's not a problem. <laughs> it doesn't have to go to Atzillus, Bri, Yitzira. People sometimes hear the Shun, they don't know. Well, Hashem needs Atzillus, he needs Akin. He doesn't need anything. But he wanted you. <laughs> He doesn't need anything, but he wanted you. <laughs> and you means you. You means your heart and your soul and your nefesh Bahamas and your goof and your brains and your cells and your, for your emotions. So you also have to want you. And Seyyid Rishtashul is not selfish. Seyyid Rishtashul is the path of selflessness. It's the path of fusion. It's the path of real oneness. In other words, the way Atmos looks at Seder Ishtashlus is the way the core, oneness, is manifested through every experience of life. That's why the al in every Madrega of Ishtashlus is going to give a muscle from the person. When he speaks about Makif, this part of the soul. Pnimi, this part of the soul. Chachma, Bina. Why are we always giving Mishalom from people? So people think, because you want to bring it down, it's much deeper than that. The whole purpose of Seder Ishtashlus was to create this experience in a person. <laughs> so when you show it and say the Ishtajlus, you're basically showing the path, the ladder, to bring everything back into oneness. That's the shlichus that you speak about? That yeah, that's shlichus. <laughs> What's a shliach? A shliach means you're going away from the source, but you're not going away from the source. <laughs> Shlucha shel adam kemaisa in halacha, yeah. The whole nekud is shlichus. What shlichus? You're going away from the source, but you're not. On, on the other hand, if you're not going away from the source, then I don't need a shliach. Say the nishtal shlus is the biggest shliach. What's the biggest problem of shlichus? You lose touch with where you come from. Shlucha shel adam kemaisa. In other words, you get lost in the shlichus lahavdal ambassadors. Let's say American, Amer- the American ambassador to South Africa, right? Our great friends. Yeah. Ambassadors, what's the greatest problem with ambassadors? You get too comfortable in the country you're living. That's why ambassadors, their children, they have a flag of their country on their house. They give lessons to their children in the language of their country, their native country. Why? Because the children have to know we're ambassadors. <laughs> We may be living in India, we may be living in Australia, we may be living, but we're ambassadors of that country. I'm just like giving a mushal. Say that Ishtalsalus, right? If you could easily get lost in the experience itself because I'm not anchored in the Atta. So say that Ishtalsalus is the key for everything. Say that Ishtalsalus basically means how oneness permeates, could permeate and penetrate and be manifested through every experience. In life. So every level of Ishtalshalus is another form of condensing Atmos on one level and really in the ultimate tikkun of revealing Atmos through that level. And in order for it to be authentic, there's Ishtalshalus. You're, you're not cutting corners, there's a chain. There's a Ishtalshalus, and you could trace each one back to its source in order to be able to work it through to fix it. Doesn't that require a lot of bittal? Always. Bittal is the key. Bittal is the key because without bittal I can't respect the journey. It's a painful journey. So without bittal I get lost in it. Or frustrated and resentful. Bittal is the ability to really respect the reality I'm in and the reality I can grow towards. So the soul vibrates every level of Seder Ishtashlis. The soul experiences every level of Seder Ishtashlis. And because we experience every level of Seder Ishtashlis, 
So Seder Ishtal is healed through us. <laughs> what do I mean healed? Healed means it's, re, it's reunited with its source. It was never really separated. But we work through that separateness to the create oneness in, in the perceived separateness. If I want to give back that muscle of marriage, right? If the husband tells the wife, in this marriage, Einoid Mulvadi, okay, have a good day. You know, <laughs> get married to the wall. So you say the opposite. The opposite means you need space for the other. What, what does space for the other mean? This is, becomes very tricky. In the secular world, it's very big. Space for the other. Space, space, respect, boundaries. There's you and there's me. But we forget, and what, but there's a third step. Can they now become one from that space? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's beautiful. I'm not the boss. You're the boss. I'm the boss. Like some women don't even allow their last name to change. I'm going to retain my identity. This is the age of feminism. I'm not surrendering to you. Those days are over. It's fine. I got it. And it's a very important step. That's basically going out of undifferentiated one. Is there's you and there's me. But now the question is, can you and I as separate people be really one or not? It's easy to say you don't exist and I wear the pants in this house and there's nobody besides me. That's not called a relationship. It's easy to say stop feeling and disassociate for shalom bias. But that's not shalom bias. That's the Chiddush of Ishtar. Of so this, you have to go through the void of working through your differences. And in that, and through that, you reach real oneness. To put it in very, very simple English, very simple English, a couple, till a couple, does not have the courage, the marriage therapist will tell me if I'm right or wrong, but maybe it's a tall order. It's a tall order. And if you're not there at the moment, don't get frustrated with yourself. Awareness. Say the Rishtalshtalus, awareness. Till a couple is not ready to confront and talk about the things that they don't trust about each other in the profoundest way. The things that drive them crazy about the other. The thing that wants to make each one run away and get divorced from the other. Till they're not ready to address that, they can't really be one. MS. You say, Rabbi, why would you sugar? You want me to address that? So you want me to go into the lion's den and come out unscathed? Okay. I'm not telling you what to do at home. <laughs> He's just being eaten alive, even worse. Uh, may, we, we need the right support for this. We need the right support. But, but I, wh- why, why is this? Because till that happens, we're really lonely. I'm lonely and you're lonely. In other words, we're connecting in the places that are fine. You know, we can eat gefilte fish on Shabbos, which is beautiful. And it's certainly better than a third world war, no question. But the part of me that thinks, that has issues with you, or the part of you that has issues with me, those parts remain completely lonely. That I will never share with you. And that's why you'll sometimes have in shul or other places where men make jokes to each other about their wives. It's one of the more embarrassing things that happens. Because this is their outlet for their loneliness. They're very lonely at home. Yes, yes. A chas- yeah, of course. I'm, I don't mean chas- I'm not making generalizations and, and, and denigrating a good sense of humor. But you know what I mean. Sometimes it's not, it's not just a sense of humor. You're married to this person. Respect for yourself, for heaven's sake. Forget about respect for your wife. Respect for yourself. You're sitting at a kiddush with tipsy people making fun of their wives. And his child is there too. But even if your child is not there, what does this demonstrate? There's a loneliness. There's a loneliness. That's why he's also coming home Shabbos drunk. The one day a week you could sit for a few hours with your spouse, chas v'shalom. So in shul it works, because in shul you don't have to have real relationships. In shul you could sit at the table, make jokes, and you're good. You talk about Trump and Biden and a few other interesting people, and you're good to go. 
it's a good escape. In a, in a relationship, I have to confront these things. So as long, <laughs> as long, so, but you understand what I'm saying? Do we remain, how do we get out of our loneliness? There's only one way. I have to talk about the lonely place. If I could talk about that to my spouse, in other words, she can create trust and safety in that space. And I can create trust and safety in that space. Now you have the strongest marriage. It's unbreachable. But if you know that it's for sure not going to go this way. Okay. In Torah, there's also the halachas of divorce because sometimes a marriage is not doesn't work. We know that. It's 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 sad. I'm not saying this can always work. And sometimes, if there's crazy trauma that's not dealt with, if somebody has a personality disorder not dealt with, if there's a mental illness not dealt with. All these things, you could be on top, top behavior, and there's no Kaylee, there's, no, there's nobody to talk to because a person may be in a prison. And we have to understand that too. If people don't take responsibility for their own illnesses, and, for their, and, and we, we are all ill, let me say that, in different ways. If somebody doesn't take a responsibility for their demons, for their traumas, for their coping mechanisms, you, the other person could do everything in the world, right? It says in, in Tanya, Kamayim apanam lapanam, right? The face we show to a mirror, it shows back to us. That's a klal, always. But the other have no, if the mirror is broken, it can't show back the face. So if the other person is completely broken, I could show and show and show, I won't get it back. But I have to not go there, say, oh, I'm doing everything, you're just a broken mirror. <laughs> what we, you know, that's another, another nice excuse. What's my point? And my point is, you want oneness that's real. One is that's real means when I'm triggered, I can also be one with you. That's why in a relationship, one of the most powerful moments in a marriage is when a wife triggers her husband badly or a husband triggers a wife badly and at that moment or a few minutes later, she could turn to him or he could turn to her and say, wow, you just triggered my trauma terribly. What I just felt was that I want to run away to the other side of the world. You know what just happened? This person took his wounds, and he brought it into the marriage. There was safety that was created around that wound. In other words, in Lashon Achsidus, you just brought Ein Oid Melvadai into the wound. That's where all healing happens. That's why Seyyid Ishtarshlis is so relevant. Because every p'chin of Seyyid Ishtarshlis is another expression of who we are, who I am. And understanding that tells me what I, have, what I want to work through, how I have to work through it, and that I could work it through. And ultimately, it could bring me back to that oneness, to that atmos, to that atmos. The oil of Ms. Typhus? Yeah. If Tsimtsum Shalai Kipshuta, it means. Tsimtsum Shalai Kipshuta means that ultimately you can't connect the infinite oneness to the finite consciousness. But I can't heal myself. Right. You have to ultimately ascend. And that's why there were views in Judaism that wanted asceticism. Asceticism was a very, very serious view in Judaism. So rolling, in the snow is a way to lead to a rolling in the snow and all these types of manifestations. I'm not dissing rolling in the snow. No, we're not dissing anything. Generally, we, generally, whenever we're sitting, <laughs> you don't roll in the snow. <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope when you ski, you don't roll in the snow. Whenever we're dissing other people, is is that the word we use? Okay, I just like to use uh, eloquent language. Okay. Whenever we find ourselves dissing other people, it's because we're dissing something in ourselves. You know, when I'm judging somebody else, it's really a form of self-judgment. In other words, when you say an opinion about somebody else, you're really not saying an opinion about anybody else but yourself. Let's remember that. If I'm saying an opinion about you, I'm really just saying an opinion about me. I'm basically describing how much I understand of me, of you. <laughs> so it's talking about me. That's why real confident people who know who they are, they're fine. Like you, you could say what you want. You're basically telling me what you think. Fine. <laughs> you know, you're telling me who you are more than you're telling me, uh, more than you're telling me who I am. 
In other words, <laughs> I once asked Rabbi Adin Steinzaltz, Rabbi Adin Evin Yisrael, all of our shalom, was a very, very wise man. So I was talking to him about different things in my life. <laughs> so I, I told him that sometimes people tell me very, very, criti they, they, they criticize me very heavily. And it's sometimes, how do I know when to take it seriously, when not to take it seriously? Sometimes it really delegitimizes a lot of what I do and say. So he says to me, he says, these people, forget about you. Let's, if you have a serious dilemma in life, would you consult with these people? <laughs> so without thinking, I said, no. He said, so why suddenly <laughs> are you taking it so seriously? He said, everyone is reflecting who they are. He says, what you need is you need a few people who you would consult, whose views you take very seriously because when they're talking to you, they're not projecting their own insecurities or anger, but they actually can create a place of safety. And from them, you get real feedback because everyone needs real feedback. It was a very, very powerful piece of advice. So it means that social media is it's, it's distracted by definition. Always. Because you, among the 20 people that come... Exactly. Exactly. Who means good. Right. Ideally, that should come from the spouse of the It could be a spouse. It could be someone else. So in the ideal relationship with the spouse, it says when Hashem introduces Chava, right? He says, Loi toi adam levadoi. It's not good for the Adam to be levadoi. So what am I going to do? Eseloi ezer kenegdoi. I'm going to create a help against him. So we have all these pshatim in the Pasuk, but now you understand really what it means. Ezer kenegdoi is the only antidote to levadoi. Ezer Kenegdoi. Kenegdoi. It should have been Ezer Itoi. <laughs> should say, I'll make the chalant, I do the laundry, I do the cleaning, you just show up and pay the credit card bills. Which shouldn't be taken for granted. What's Ezer Kenegdoi? So Rashi says, Zacha, Ezer Loi Zacha Kenegdoi. So Chesidr Starches. Ezer Kenegdoi means literally, it's the Kenegdoi, it's the apposition that takes you out of Levada. What's going to take me out of my loneliness is not the part of my wife that agrees with me. It's not the part of my wife that's one with me. What takes you out of your loneliness is the part of your spouse that, that is opposed to you. That drifts away. That says, this guy is crazy. Not you. I'm talking about me. You're not crazy. How do you embrace it? Only if there's safety and goodwill. If there's safety and goodwill. If we realize that the oneness is deeper that's why a Seder Ishtalshlis always needs Atta. And that Dalter Rebbe says in Torah Ur, when it says Ha'adam in Tanakh, it also means Hashem, the Adam. So he says, Loi toi ve'yoyz Ha'adam levadei. Hashem was alone, everything was perfect. Everything was Atta. But Hashem said, it's Loi toi for me to be levadei. Everything was levadei. It was Taka Einoid Melvadoi. So what do I do to really reach that place of toiv? Esa loi eze kinegdei. Hashem says, I'm going to make for Ha'adam, for Hashem, a help. What's going to be the help? The Kenegde, the opposition. The opposition, the Kenegde. What does it mean, opposition? Opposition doesn't mean opposition, you hate me. Opposition means otherness. Otherness is opposition. It's opposition, Te'inayit Mulvada. And from there you have the real Taif. And that's also Pshat, when it says, Zacha loy Zacha. Zacha, if you're refined... Then Aza, then your wife could just be a help. Loi if you're not refined, so she has to help you work on yourself. So then it's connected. You hear, you hear? everyone taiches you zacha. If the man merits, his wife helps him. Loi he gets a punishment. No. Zacha, if you're mezuchach. This is divrei lekim chayim. Listen. Zacha, when you're refined, then Aza, then her truth comes out. She's just here to help. And you're here to help her. Loi when we're not worked out. Loi then Kenegdoi. <laughs> then the Kenegdoi allows the refinement. When you're experiencing a struggle in your marriage, generally, and I'm, I'm not saying now always, and you have to know, these are serious stuff. And the same is true with your children. This is usually my path for healing. Our spouses bring out in us the parts that we have repressed for many, 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 many years and have not healed. And now it's our opportunity for our neshama to confront it and heal it. 
And that's why you'll see sometimes the same pain you went through childhood, you're going through again in your marriage. It's the second chance. It says in Chassidus that marriage is like a second Yeridus HaNeshama. It's like the Neshama coming down a second time. What's Pshat? So it looks like a nice Vart. Okay, we're getting, re- I'm reborn. It's very deep. My Neshama came down for a Tikkun. If I didn't do that Tikkun, my marriage is the second birth. And everything is going to rehab. It's going to happen again in a different way. But this time you'll be able to deal with it. And usually we don't. So then our children is the third chance. The children, especially when they're growing up, not when they're little, when they're growing up, put their parents through the ringer. The parents say, why was I punished? You weren't punished. You're allowed to now heal. You're going to heal. Now you're going to go to every stuff. With our spouse, we say, oh, I'm getting divorced. I hate you. You're a What do you do with your child? I hate you. You're getting divorced. I'm getting divorced. So some parents do that. They get divorced from their children too. But sometimes children is etzame atzamai. So now the children say, oh, wow, maybe I could look in the mirror now. And it's painful stuff, I'm saying. This is painful stuff. What does all this do? This all does, it creates real oneness, real healing. Not fake oneness, not fake healing. That's Seder Hishtashlus. That's real. So Seder Hishtashlus is, Atzmus wanted the relationship. That's what Dira B'Tachtoyne means. Dira B'Tachtoyne means, I want to live B'Tachtoyne. What does it mean B'Tachtoyne? In the basement? In the basement of 18 Forshe? He wants to live there too. It's a mikveh. <laughs> Dira B'Tachtoyne means that Atzmus dwells and lives with in Tachtoyne, meaning every part of me, even, even the lowest parts of me, can become a Beis HaMikdosh V'Shachanti B'Soycham. How? Is this a game? It's a joke? Is it worshipping the ego? The exact opposite. It's allowing the self and every aspect of the self to become a channel and a conduit for the infinite light. But I can only do it if I'm ready to work it through. If I amputate and I don't take it seriously and I just say, I'm not in pain, everything is perfect. That's not Dira B'Tachtoinim. That's dira disassociated from tachtainim. Maybe it's a dira bel yoinim. Maybe, if you're lucky. Because usually when you disassociate from your tachtainim, you disassociate from your yoinim also. But maybe, maybe, huh? Git? <laughs> you're smiling the whole time. Why? It's incredible. The zafar and low zafar. Oh. My wife is going to go crazy. Really? She's going to love it. She'll let you go skiing for the next 20 years. For, for a month. For a month each time. It's also true. It's not only profound, it's also true. <laughs> so you're saying uh, when a child goes through certain things and then he re- goes through the same things uh, later on in his marriage, yeah. what if the child had a good Oh, you never. That's pure. terrible. <laughs> and then comes back to the, to the reincarnation of the marriage and it does every single thing in the direction. What's going on? So it's too much soothing, too much seeing, too much secure, too much pampering. What Listen, happened? to make blanket statements about how marriages work, every pain I went through, I'm but, not. I'm, but he had no trauma. I mean, he grew up a perfect child. Fantastic. Love the world. Where's this child living? Can you tell me? You? In Moscow. <laughs> From all places in Moscow, right? The country of trauma, the country that produced the most trauma on this planet is Russia. It's actually interesting because it's not, not necessarily. No? No. There's a in Germany, there was in Germany, Hitler said, I kill everybody, I murder everybody. In Russia, Stalin was your best friend. Hitler never tried to be your best friend. Stalin was your best friend. The Jews were crying at his funeral. Shugan No, they had to cry. They had to cry. I hear you. You're very good. If you're not, you went to Siberia. But the professors here were taka crying. Because the American intelligentsia explains how socialism and communism is Mashiach. It's Messianic. The Tzadrete man killed 50 million people. But by his funeral, they were crying. The way they played with people's minds. I don't mean Russia is the only source of trauma. I come from Russia, so I know about Russia. But uh, <laughs> to some other countries, that also, Hungary also has a little trauma. 
Galicia also a little bit. Epigenetics too. That's true. There are children that have amazing homes, but they carry in their genes a lot of stuff. And the truth is that our dair was, the Rebbe once said, our dair was destined to be and all the dairas. That means we're carrying everything from all the dairas. And that explains a lot of things. It says in Pirkei Yavis, right, that there were ten generations from Adam till Noyach, right, to tell you that Hashem had patience until Noyach, and then he brought the marble. But it took ten generations of corruption. That's almost a thousand years. And then there were ten generations from Noyach to Avram to teach you that there was a lot of patience until Avram Avinu came and got the schar of everybody. So he says, by Noyach it says, till the marble came. By Avram Avinu it says he got the schar from everybody, but if they were unworthy, what's the schar? The pshat is, Noyach escaped and healed himself. Avram Avinu healed all the generations. It was different. Kibbal schar kula. That's what avoid of Avram. He didn't just run into the heavens. He fixed all the generations. So he got the schar. In other words, he healed everybody. So the Rebbe said, our door, like Avram Avinu, it's there before the Gula, so we need to heal all the dairas. That's why you're seeing things that no one understands in youth, in teenagers, like many of them grew up in homes that our parents could only dream of, such homes. And yet they're experiencing so much struggle. It's not necessarily their own. It's usually not their own. It could be from generations and generations that our generation is destined to heal. And in order to heal it, you have to bring it out to the fore. Because if you don't have, have the Ezer Kenegdoi, you can't you can have real levada. It's not Enoid Mulvada, it's fake Enoid Mulvada. So by Mela, it all, it all comes to the fore and it's very hard. So now let's come back to our Nekudah here. So now we understand just the general picture of what Seder Ishtal Shalos is. You see, Atuhu, Hashem, Levadecha, Atas, Eshemayim, Shemayim, Shemayim. It's not Stam Verte. Each word is another manifestation of how reality can be experienced. After Atta. Atta is Atta. Now, when you have Hu, it's still Eina Ed Mulvadi. You have Hashem, it's still Eina Ed Mulvadi. But it's already a source for the other. Because Ur means light. And Yud Kevavke is already the way the light has some identity. But it's all of Adacha. Then you have Atas, it's Hashemayim. It's already post symptom. But you have Shemayim, Ishmael, Shemayim. In other words, there's still a sense of infinite transcendence experience. But it's already in a post symptom reality. Then you have Ha'aretz and Yamim. You have Alma Deskasya, Alma Deskasya. What's Alma Deskasya? Alma Deskasya is the water. Alma Deskasya is, is dry land. What's the uniqueness of the seas and the oceans? The fish are submerged in the water. You don't see them. You don't see anything. When you come to an ocean, all you see is water. Kamayim Layamachasim. In dry land, you see differentiation. So what does it mean to be an Alma Deskasya? It means you're alive, you're a fish. But you're a fish in water. You feel submerged in the source. In other words, everyone consciously is aware that they are manifestations of divine energy. That's Alma Deskasya. Alma Deskasya means your ego is revealed. Deskasya means your identity is revealed as something separate. And that's what dry land is. So you just went through from Atta, Hu, Hashem, Levadech, Atta, Sishman, Shmash, Shmash, Chol, Tzom, Ma'aretz, V'chol, Shal, Yam, V'chol, Shabam, V'ata, Mechayes, Kulam. That's the whole Seder Shalshlis. <laughs> In one line, everything you're dealing with. <laughs> everything you're dealing with. Every emotion, every instinct, every experience, every pattern, every thought, every word. Every energy vibrating inside of us. It's, a, it's resonating another element of Shalshlis. Sometimes all the way down to Klippa. That's part of Alma Dezgali. Alma Dezgali means the world of separateness. On dry land, you are you, I am I. We're not one. Really, we are one. <laughs> really, we are one. But here we have to work through the oneness in separateness. Say, oh, we're really one. It's like a couple getting married. Say, oh, you know, like you know, when they get engaged and the chassan says and the kala says, he finishes all my sentences. You know that one? I say, okay, in a few years, hopefully you'll understand each other's sentences. Now you finish each other's sentences. It's very nice to say there's no difference between us. We're one. We like the same food. We have the same appetite. We like the same wallpaper. We like the same vacation. We like the same matzo balls. Are there any differences between you? Heaven knows that there are a few differences between a man and a woman. Just a few. 
When those come out, make sure you don't run away from each other because they're going to come out. That's the vert. Two halves of the same soul. And how are those two halves becoming one? Each half has to work through its own stuff. Yeah, integration. What do we say right before davening? There are two psukim that contradict each other. The third psuk makes peace. So I have a question. Why make two psukim that contradict each other and then bring a third one to make peace? Maybe they shouldn't contradict each other. What is it? Let's get into a war and then we'll bring a third guy. Don't get into a war and don't bring a third guy. Don't bring an arbitrator. They say a, a rabbi called up another rabbi and he said, Let's make unity. He said, Ankegen Vemen. Against whom? We're not going to fight with anybody? You know, somebody told me the other day they have a lot of pain in their life. And this person said to me, he said to me, he says, I was thinking the other day, somebody asked this person a question and it touched them to the core. The person said to this man, what would you look like without all this pain? <laughs> he said, I wouldn't exist. <laughs> so he says, when you ask God for Mashiach, do you actually mean what you say? Are you going to be able to exist without this pain? Are you going to be able to exist without this pain? Sometimes the pain is what keep, gives me purpose. I'm a miserable, I'm miserable, I'm miserable. Sometimes the fighting gives us purpose. Sometimes you feel like in, in our world, like if there's no machlaikas, what's going to be left? Everybody's going to get along? <laughs> so what do you need shnek suwa kishim And the answer is poshet. If you don't have two psukim that contradict each other, you never made peace. You understand? You never made peace. You only made peace between those that don't need peace. <laughs> That means there could be real peace. In other words, peace that connects to the parts that contradict each other, not the part that doesn't contradict each other. That's what oneness means. So just to say Hashem is one, it's true Hashem is one. But is He one in me? Oh, I got 70 trillion parts. How could He be one in 70 trillion parts? That said, it is Talshlus. Exactly. Okay. We'll take a break here. And the Beis Hashem, tomorrow there's a woman's class, 9.30 a.m. And Thursday we'll resume. Just want to announce, you could tell your wives and daughters, my wife is starting today, this morning, a Tanya class, 9.45 at 49 Linkrest. Monday morning. You could share it with your wives. It's not on YouTube. Everybody have a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One, two, one, two.